The sniper's job is to take out the enemy and get out quickly. Fear is there, but you have to control it. Once you lose control, fear will kill you. Going on missions with an empty stomach is a must. It's easier to go. There's never a standard situation. No matter what we think, the enemy thinks differently. Their sniper started making mistake after mistake. I just got curious. I can't see it in my colleague. He's acting like me. Only I'm already in position and he's just about to find me. The most important thing for me, my partner, and the machine gunner is to survive. There are no other questions. No distractions at all anymore. Many times I've seen people panic and go into a stupor. This is the last time I see them. There is an incentive to think more. There's a constant tension. It's a resource, psychological and moral, that is being used up. In a war with high-intensity combat and technology, the role of the sniper often doesn't count. But this role is an important part of the battlefield. In this episode, you'll find out what kind of war Ukrainian snipers are fighting, their combat stories about sniper concentrations near Bakhmut, see real footage from their sites, and more. The sniper's job is to destroy the enemy and get out quickly. That is, we must be a self-surviving unit. For example, when snipers enter a position and see that the battle there is meat grinder, they have nothing to do there with their rifle. Yes, there are times when we've had to get into the meat grinder. It's more efficient to find a good spot, wait, and then do your job. That is, not chopping with axes, but cutting point by point like a scalpel. Survived a week added experience. Lived another month. Again added experience. When you go in for an assault, you just go in early and get into position and wait for the infantry to go in for the assault. You're ready. And when the counterattack comes, then you meet the enemy. But it's also dangerous to work this way, because before the enemy counterattack comes, first artillery fire, aviation, all this works into your square. If you're lucky, when the shelling stops and the enemy comes, then you are already working. Fear is there, but you have to control it. As soon as you lose control, fear will kill you. You'll start making wrong decisions. You'll either go into a stupor or, when you have to, run. You'll sit still or, on the contrary, you'll run ahead of time. I don't know. Somehow it all works on automatic. The more experience you have, the more automatic it is. You have to control everything. On the way, when you walk, you have to notice where your infantry is. If you can talk to them, know their morale. It is desirable to know who you have behind your back from your own. We've long since moved away from the practice of sniper twos. Why? Because it's very hard and strenuous job, which is very difficult to do in twos. We work in threes or fours. One or two snipers, a machine gunner, and a driver. This is already a small sniper group. We start our work in the evening. We'll gather our ammunition. Everyone has to double check what they have, what they have to carry. I, as the team leader, check again in the evening or all the necessary things. When I'm at peace, my men are ready for the mission. Breakfast in the morning, then lunch. We don't eat after lunch. So if we go to the night, we go to the mission with an empty stomach. It's mandatory. It's easier to go. Doctor says it's easier to go when you're wounded, if you get hit in the stomach. But it's mostly physically easier. When you're hungry, when you go to work, you have an incentive to go back and eat. When we start working, they're like rats hiding in their holes. 
They inform their leadership. Then their drones take off to search for us. Then they return fire with artillery and mortars. In the meantime, we show the enemy how we can shoot accurately. The second number, or escort, is necessarily looking for a place to withdraw, where it is safe to hide, a dugout, a cellar. In short, a hiding place to hide from the drone drops. That's how it works. There's never a standard situation. No matter what we think, the enemy thinks differently. When we come to a place, to our positions, even if we have been there several times, the picture of the battle around us will always be different. Sometimes it's shells coming in, sometimes there are mines, sometimes they just sow anti-personnel mines with antenna along the way we came. That's why we have to go back another way. That is, you think of several options at once. The main thing is to have several ways to get away from this point, because we are always on the edge and the enemy can sell some flank, and you will be cut off, so you will not come back. It is hard to stand at full height when several machine guns are working in your direction, and you can't sit down or lie down because there is waist-high grass in front of you that obstructs your visibility. Only when you're standing can you shoot. If you're scared and lying down, you can't see where the machine gun is working from. So you have to shoot first and accurately. Since I'm doing this interview, I've always been faster than the enemy. My very first experience, the enemy was 300 meters away. At one of the positions, our guys got surrounded, and we had to clear the way for them to the rear so they could return. It was 300 meters there. But what saved us was our artillery worked on us, not the enemy and the enemy couldn't understand where I was firing from. Well, it would have been stupid to shoot from the place where their artillery was working, and I just couldn't get away from there. Well, we worked it out. Our artillery worked out on us too, and we miraculously got away. So everything ended well for us. We got into position. The enemy position was a kilometer away. Their sniper, he did everything right. He got out. And he crawled the landing at the right angle. I mean, I didn't see him get into his first position, but then he started making mistake after mistake. He got up, and from one position where he didn't like it, he went to another position and started laying down again. It just got me interesting to see. I see that it's my colleague. He's wearing the same cape. He's acting like me, only I'm already in position, and I can already see him. And he's just about to find me. He didn't stand a chance. Well, in the same way, if, if I come and he's already lying down, then, then I'll die. As he was lying in his second position, a dog came up to him. I don't know what it was doing there. He had to get up again and go to his third position. And I still didn't shoot. I was interested to further study how the enemy worked. Although it was already clear that he had made a mistake, he lay down, lay there for two hours, got up and began to adjust his cloak. And I can see it all. I think he probably went to the bathroom on the spot and failed. Well, judging by the fact that he was making some movements in his cloak, I realized that if he lay down again, he might find me later. So I didn't. I didn't let him lay down again. I fired and that was it. His story was over. Right now, I'm sitting here without body armor and without a helmet. I feel like I'm naked. As soon as I put on my body armor, helmet, rifle, I'm a machine. I don't have a lot of questions about life. The most important thing for me, my partner, and the machine gunner to survive. There are no other questions. No distractions at all anymore. It's scary. It's always scary. But so far, I've been able to control the fear. I've just seen a lot of people panic and go into a stupor. And that's the last time I see them. It gives you the incentive to think more. There's no distractions during combat. You can't think about something good there, about nature, about the sea. You must always control the picture of the battle, what is going on around you. Always listen, watch, observe everything. This way you have more chances to survive. If you can still hide from the night camera somehow, the thermal imager sees everything. There are special cloaks for this, both ours and the Russians. They're called invisibility cloaks. And Turkey sells them to us and the Russians. So they have the same ones we have. So yes, it hides you a little bit. 
But when you train on your partner and you go out on the range, he's wearing a cloak and you're wearing a cloak. You're looking for each other. You begin to understand how to determine where that cloak is. Yeah, you're not radiating heat in that cape, but there's certain signs that that cape is there. So you can shoot there. Snipers really don't rest. A sniper has done his work, comes in, washes up, washes his clothes, sleeps, and goes to the range to hone his skills. Maybe we have such masters who know everything. I think the longer I serve as a sniper, I guess that I do not know half of everything. It all comes with experience. And such experience is not even taught in sniper school, where I was twice. This is my personal experience. I can share it with my partner. He shares his experience. Shot! I was trained to lie, shoot lying down. I came to war, and here in the lying position, I shot about 10% of the time. And so you have to shoot standing, from the knee, sitting on a backpack, whatever you want, but not lying down. It's hard everywhere. You have a separate war, different from the rest of your unit. On a mission, you have a backpack of 30 kilograms, a rifle of 7 kilograms, body armor, a helmet, a walkie-talkie, a tripod. It's harder to get anywhere. And most importantly, you have to leave and preferably take everything with you to not lose anything. 40 kilos with you. I weigh 100. And even if I know that there are no anti-personnel mines, but there are anti-tank mines, I can't even go there because anti-tank mine is triggered by 120 kilograms. I'm like a tank for that mine. We have a pact with our partner. He won't come back for me if I can't move on my own, and I won't come back for him. We know that. We're honest with each other. In situations like this, his job is to get our main force and call help. He himself weighs 100 kilograms, plus ammunition. He can't even take me out with a machine gunner. It's not rational to lose two more men because of one. I explain to them, guys, if I'm dead, I really don't care anymore. Don't take any chances. Don't, don't come back for my body. Same thing if you're wounded. If you can't move on your own, at least if you can crawl, the guys will survive and leave and you will crawl somewhere, hide and wait for help. We have an average of two to three destroyed enemies per exit. One is so-so. It's a bad estimate. There were times 7 to 10 eliminated enemies, and at a distance of up to 300 meters. That's top level. If you were interested in today's episode and would like me to continue doing episodes like this next, then let me know by hitting the like button and leaving a comment. You can support the author by the details in the description. Thank you.